Hello and welcome to Let's Talk Tachlis. It's so good to have you again with us. Yes, it's been a while. I know you all wanted to hear more and I also wanted to broadcast more. But we are here when looking forward, we're not looking in the rearview mirror, right? Uh, we'll begin this new season today with a very unique and special guest. And I promise you that you will tell me the same once you watch this episode. Today we have a guest that, in my opinion, can write a bestseller book that will sell tens of thousands of copies and will have to reprint and reprint the book without too many adjustments because the story is so riveting and so amazing and so, in a way, heartbreaking. On the other end, it's so overwhelming and heartwarming that... This will be a story you'll all remember. So without further ado, it's my honor to introduce to you Rabbi Mr. Motrezam Meisles. Hello. Hi, how are you? Well, Hashem, welcome to Let's Talk Tachlis. Thanks for having me here. Are you kidding? Pleasure's all mine. So let's get straight to the point. Why are we having Mr. Meisles here today? Uh, Mr. Meisles is a friend of mine for many years. And is a friend of very many Yidin that need help, that need askunas, that need just a good smile on the face. But one day he was hit with a very big load of bricks, let's say, to say the least. And I want to let him quickly say what happened on the very big day that changed his life. Maybe forever or possibly just for a few years. So the mic is all yours. So first of all, I know him from years. He's a friend of my father and the family. Thank you. So even before I was born, I even went to remember to look at our apartment in your house oh, yeah, before I, I got married. Don't make me so old, okay? So, <laughs> uh, so we know each other for a long time. We even daven together now. Yes. Hashem, yes. So we went through a lot of good times, hard times, smile times, sad times together. So basically, uh, let me just begin to tell you uh, why you called me, probably. And I'll begin my story that happened now at December 12 is going to be four years. An unfortunate four years that didn't just change my life forever. It changed my family's life. It changed my friend's life. It changed a lot of people's lives forever. So, on December 12th, I traveled to Yitzhak and I went with my wife. My wife never ever went to Israel before. I went multiple, multiple times and not she, she didn't go because she didn't want to go, she didn't have interest. She just didn't want to leave the kids, that was her. She never ever wanted to leave her kids alone. She said, let me stay home, you go, it's not the time. My Shve is very close to Rav Dushinsky from Etzirul. From there, I got my connection to him. And he was marrying off his youngest child. So I was, me being close to him, he even sleep, sleep, sleep in my house a few times. I told my, my, I told my wife, I'm going. And she said, you know what? This time I'm coming along. I said, sure, my pleasure. She never went on vacation. We never ever went on vacation in 17 years. Saved a lot of money. A lot of money, but you know what? I'll get to the point where I think yes. you should go on vacation. Yes. And we scheduled the trip. Now, two days after Hanukkah, I went. We flew out to Israel. It was on a Tuesday. It was a Monday night. We got the Tuesday morning. It was a gorgeous flight. The excitement was unbelievable because she was never there. And it's our first vacation together with a family of five kindled canine and And we land and we were supposed to go to Mitzpah Rimon, that's in the Negev, that's around two hours from Yishalayim for a few days. And then we're supposed to come Thursday to Yishalayim to spend Shabbos. So we wanted a little bit to rest up a little bit. As we land, I told her that I have a policy that before I do anything in Israel, 
I go to the Koisl. I daven there, and then we can go wherever. She says, no, we'll be back Thursday. We'll go then. I told her, no, it's not happening. I have to go. So we came, we arrived around 10 o'clock in the morning. We went the first thing to the Koisl. I went to Davim. She went. She comes back. She tells me, you know, thanks. Thank you so much. The, uh, I never, ever had such a feeling, such a spiritual feeling as I had, because she was never there. Thank you. Now we can go. Tuesday night, we get to Mitzpah the Imam, in the Negev, to the Bereshit Hotel, whoever knows it's a very luxurious hotel. A lot of tourists go there. Mm -hmm. And it's good, very good for vacation. We ate supper, we went to sleep. Wednesday morning, at around, I think around 10 o'clock, we get downstairs after davening, and we go to the front desk, and we ask them, what is there to do in the area? So we said, there's a lot of action. There's jeeping, there's a horse tour, it goes a little bit around. So I told my wife, let's go jeeping. Um, no, a man's a little bit more wild, and he likes to have a little bit more fun. I'm not going on a dead horse. She said she's scared, because she heard that the horse are trained. Let's go on the horse. I said, no problem. So we get to Alpaca Farm. It's like 10 minutes away from the hotel. And I'm not sure exactly the timing, probably around 10.30 or something like that. And we wait there, and the guy greets us, comes out, a very nice guy. And he says, I'm going to be your, your tour guide today. Let's go put on helmets. I look at him. Helmets? I mean, these horses <laughs> don't even look like they can walk. They can't run. But he says, that's the policy. I was thinking even two-year-olds go on this horse. Okay, we put it on. We start going on the tour. I th would say we were more than halfway through. I guess separate ho two horses. Two separate horses okay. and the tow guard. There was three of us. And in the middle, she tells me. I ask her how it was going. I turn around. She tells me with a smile. Wow. Look at this Nafluus Aboy. Because there you can see the unbelievable Nafluus Aboy from the Irish. That once you go on this, you go a few miles and miles and miles on the horse. But you can see all the... Gorgeous views. Valleys. And that was unbelievable. <clears throat> so she tells me, why didn't we do it until now? I would say a minute later, I you couldn't even see a plane pass, but an IDF plane passed, and it gives an unbelievable supersonic boom. As it gave the supersonic boom, I'll tell you the truth, that I still hear it in my ear, that supersonic boom. It's so painful, to me especially, that I still hear it sometimes, especially when a plane goes. So the plane goes farther, f faster than I can see. It gives such a supersonic boom that it spooked the horses. The horses went wild. The tow guard was screaming we should pull back the strings to start to stop it. But not just we couldn't, the tow guide couldn't. So the first thing that happened, she was behind me. I saw her flying airborne off the horse because she couldn't hold on because it was a very, very, the horse throws himself. It's impossible to connect. And she went flying. I had no idea where she flew. The horse was throwing me off, so I just broke my throw and I jumped off. And he ran off his horse. I still see him run off the head and jump off. For a second, I was looking around. I was screaming, Turty, where are you? Didn't hear a voice. All of a sudden, I saw her down there, a little further, a few feet away, laying on her back. And me and the tow guide ran over. And I saw she was lifeless. Being involved in the hospital setting for years, helping people in emergency rooms, I've seen plenty. I'm not going to go into details what I saw, but she was not breathing at the moment. So I asked the guy, do you know first aid, CPR, could you help me? I said, I'll tell you the truth. I never ever had such an issue. I don't even know how to put on a Band-Aid. But the problem was, he didn't even have a horse to call for help. There was no phone service. So he walked down 
for probably like two, three miles to get help while he wow. left me with my wife. I did CPR, was trying to help her as much as I could. That was, I did probably for like 20 minutes. I can't, uh, 23 minutes later, the IDF came running up. They couldn't even come with a helicopter because it was impossible to land. And they started working on her. Now, when this happened, I was totally lost. I didn't know what to do. But while I was trying to keep her alive, I was screaming to her, Tzerti, you have five kids. You got to keep on holding. You got to keep strong. Please keep strong for your kids. Please, please. I was crying to her. She was mumbling, but I couldn't hear. I mean, she was basically not here. At one point, I put her hands on her eyes and I said, Shemaya Sul, because I saw that I didn't wow. believe it's wow. impossible for her to survive this injury, this brain injury. They came. First, I called the Baba Verebe to be Maska. And then I called my brother in law. Uh, his name is Isha Gold. You know when we dove together. And I told him where we're holding you. Okay, he should go. He has to go tell his parents. He said he can't. He doesn't know what to do. So he ran to the Afpanet that gave his first shear in the morning. I think it was 6 o'clock. And he told him what's going on. My brother just called him. What do I do? I can't tell my, I can't tell my parents. He says, you have to go tell your mother... Because there's nothing in the world like mother's tears. This is what he told him. So after a while, he went to tell his mother. And the first thing that she did, she started crying, but she grabbed the Tehillim and said, Tehillim, as I calculated, I once spoke to him about it. It was about the time when Atsula brought her back, when she started to say Tehillim, because they thought it was almost impossible to bring her back. So let me just ask you a small technical question. Hatsula yeah. was brought in later to the scene also, like um, so. Mada was there. Mada, yes. Uh, Israeli. Not just Mada service. was there. It was also Echid Hatsula, mm -hmm. Mada, and the IDF were there. They were all three there together, and they carried her off by hand. But there was a helicopter waiting. Now, making phone calls, having connections, they want her take her to Saraka Hospital. Sraka so Hospital is very close, and that's the law. Besheva, right? And Besheva, that's the law you have to take to the first, it's all over the place, the whole world, the first trauma center. Mm -hmm. I got connected to somebody that said it's impossible that she'll be able to be saved there. You have to take her to Hadassah Hospital. The helicopter didn't want to stop. Through the connections, they got Litzman, he was then the Sad Hebriot, to call the helicopter, the people just there. just tell our audience, that means the health minister. The health of, minister in Israel. Yes. And he said, he's there in Hadassah, you better bring her here. The helicopter did against their will and brought it to Hadassah. But I wasn't allowed to go in the helicopter. So first they took me to the police station to give a police report. And from there, they drove a halfway. And I had some good Jews, Monty Krauss, and other people picked me up and drove me to the hospital. And I forgot to say, I broke down my fingers, my wrist, and my back. Wow. And I was in terrible pain because my fingers was twisted. And I was thinking to myself once, I don't even know how I did CPR with a broken finger. I was going to say, it's so typical you to forget what broke so, on you. So the adrenaline from a person wow. that goes through something, forget certain things to save, especially it's your wife's life. So let's go fast forward. So when I got to the hospital, I met a two tzaddikim. They have an organization, it's called Yad Avruam. Everybody in Israel knows about them. The father's name is Shimon Brown. He was once the Tal Sahar Nerebus Gavir. And the son's name is Cheski Brown. Today, Cheski and Shimon are my, like, brothers. They were waiting for her in Adasa. They gather a, a doctor to operate, to operate the soldiers when they get shot. The funny thing is that a soldier got shot that day. And he operated on that soldier as well. That soldier is still alive. That soldier was actually also clinically dead. I still keep up with the father. I actually spoke to him two weeks ago. He had a Heineken, he made a pity Ben. But it was all the same time. But getting there, I saw what that it didn't look so good. And I was lost. And I didn't know anybody in Israel. It was very, very tough for me 
What's going on? What am I going to do? I have five kids at home. What's the first thing I do? So I get there. I see Chesky Brown. He comes over to me and he hugs me and tells me, don't worry. I am here for you. I'm your new partner. We're going to go through this. Meanwhile, my father-in-law found out and everybody, and he caught the first flight to Israel. I also had my three sisters with their husbands oh, came. I'm the wow, only boy. Couple. Yes. And they stayed for me, actually, as long as I was in Israel until I came back. Because they didn't want to leave me alone. And there, Avdashinsky son came, and I had a few uh, familiar faces to feel... Remember who else was there? To feel, to feel comfortable. Yes you, were, yes, you were also there. Right. But <laughs> you came be, a few minutes later. Right. It happens to be I arrived that morning, and I told my wife that's the first place we have to go. So you... My you, wife came with me. Correct. So I met you, actually, it was the next morning, right. if I remember. Correct. She was already in a room. Right. So, of course, room. I remember. Um, and I met your mother-in-law then. Correct. correct. And the first thing that happened is I saw that Chesky Brown was walking back and forth and pacing. I did not, it did not look good. Hashem actually was very grateful for me. There's an ask in the borough park that everybody knows. His name is Chesky Rosenberg. He's a medic in Atsula for probably 30, 40 years. He the helped, king. He's the king in helping people in Askunis, especially people that are sick. He was in Israel then. He had to catch a flight that night back home. He came to the hospital and told his wife to fly home because he had to be with me. I remember I saw his face. I saw a familiar face and a friend of mine. I broke down crying. I told Chaski, you do me one favor. Tell me the truth. What's going on? What is going on? Tell me the truth. Don't hide anything from me. He told me, I promise you I'm not. He told me I should speak to my kids. I tell them everything is fine. But meanwhile... In the middle of the operation, the, the doctor came out. The doctor called me over and told me that he doesn't think that she's going to make through the operation. It's not possible because she has like so much bleeds in the brain, like somebody having a stroke, but like a me- multiple strokes. So, that, so the main injury was not the brain, it was, a, it was only a brain injury. She didn't even have a scratch in her face. Wow. It was the impact from the fall. And, and she wore a helmet. Exactly. That's, That's what people want, probably go, I don't know. She wore a helmet. And the helmet was still on her head, and I opened, took it off, and the helmet was still intact. It didn't even break. So it was more the impact. So it's not that we neglected or didn't wear a helmet. The helmet was on, and I took it off. So after the operation, it was hours later. The doctor comes out and tells me the operation's over. Go see her. I said, I can't. Maybe I'll wait for tomorrow. He tells me, you probably won't have a chance tomorrow. Can you imagine what went through my mind then? I was like lost in a, in a, that I'm not familiar. Yes, I have friends, but it's not my home base. And I had actually a very nice guy. He, I didn't even own. He slept with me and put me to sleep that night. And I had some friends coming, Elias coming from Katie's Babov. Actually, uh, a relative. family and relative of yours, Ben Benzin Yisru, he's my Yapurish, his son-in-law, he's from also the Chavad Knesset, and he was also stayed with me all night. So they put me to sleep. I mean, I could have, couldn't sleep. It was the job to put you to sleep that yes, night. Yes, that night. Besides that, that I was busy also telling my kids that everything's okay when I knew it wasn't. And it was very hard for me to lie to them. And let's just go on for a, a few minutes back home. My my kids were in school, and I called my mother even before I was in the hospital. Once I was going down, and she thought probably a bomb happened. She said, what happened, a terrorist attack? I said, no. She was screaming, I'm losing my daughter-in-law. She had that feeling. So my daughter, my wife went to school. My kids were in school. I mean, my, my mother, and she went to pick up my daughter, my two daughters, it was probably the hardest thing my mother told me. It was probably the hardest time of her life. Just telling them that the mother has an injury. And she knew the condition. She couldn't tell them. And then my son came home from yeshiva, from Kerem Shloim. It was like, and they went, all went home. But the matzav was not good. But they didn't know exactly. But they were smelling some things. Because they had to say to Hillem. 
I'm very involved in the organization. I was trying to remind myself a few things because it's four years. It's called Baislaplitis. It's an orphanage home. So I go, I used to go for years, every like boy, with Velvo Goldstein, he's the fundraiser. And six days before the accident, I made a fundraising party in my house. Wow. For, for, for with, this. With your wife, of course. With my wife and for this, for these orphans that don't have a home. And Velvo was then above the shul when he heard it. And my cousin told him, and Velvo, Somebody told me he saw he put on his head and he was screaming, having tears saying it. He said, it can't be, it can't be. You don't know what he does for this organization, for orphans. How could it be? Hashem, it can be. So... You want to drink some water? It seem, no, it's fine. It seems like it's... It's bringing back very, very tough times. I, I, uh, we were there for two weeks. After two weeks, after having operations, I remember Shabbos, we were there. My brother-in-law had one Shabbos morning of feeling that she woke up. He didn't even tell me. Five o'clock in the morning, he ran to the room to see if she's up, to see if there's movement. We were singing Shabbos songs. Every time I thought I saw her hand move, I got so excited. After two weeks, the doctor told me there that it's time to leave because he's scared if she gets an infection, they won't let her out. So... Leave now, let in New York them take care of the rest. So through uh, the organization, Isaac Leader, it's called Vital One, did the transport from Israel to New York. From there she went right to Columbia Hospital. But let me tell you something very important. Right before I went to Israel, I made something, it's called Traveler's Insurance. It cost me $58 for me and $58 for my wife. My wife was laughing then. She says, Why did you, what's going to happen? $58 from her and $58 from me covered us. The hotel stay, the operation, the hospital, the, hospital, the, the, vital, the, the, the vital one flight getting us back. out, the flight back, my flames. She came back. We went on El Al on a regular commercial flight because they said that the air pressure is not good on a, on a medical flight. So they took out 10 seats and three, four doctors came along and they covered that as well. I just want to say the, you pay so much for vacation, the importance of having travel insurance. The doctor showed me in Israel. I mean, I got to stop you one minute, yeah. one minute. Number one, I think this company could never have such insurance travel industry. It never has such a good plug like they're getting tonight. <laughs> It was travel X. <laughs> Whatever. And if the computer is going to crash tomorrow from the new applications, it's your fault. It's number one. Maybe they give me commission. Number two, can you just have a, do you have a wild number? What this? How much it was? How what, much it cost? What did it cost them? So a wild number. I, I, the doctor that did the operation told I'm me. I'm sorry to, to be a little materialistic. That's fine. But it's, such an emotional speech, a conversation. But it's very, I would think that's it's very I'm, important for people it. to know because, because, because you have to make travel insurance. And I learned, actually, it was, I didn't even know why I did it, but I went to uh, a cell phone store, uh, I think it's World of Communications on 13th Avenue, and the guy, they told me, make travel insurance, they do it. I said, okay, I'll do it. It was Travelex, so the doctor that made the operation showed me the check even before I left. He had it already from them, it was $90,000, his, his share. They covered me, before I left, the whole share, because I saw the bill afterwards, was almost a million dollars that the insurance covered me that I paid $58 for my wife for. And they covered me a million dollars that I would have probably have to do out of my pocket, if, if not that. Knowing you, probably you wanted a refund for the $58 too, huh? I, I, on my part, I wanted that refund. <laughs> of course. You came out. But I can't because they paid me. The only time I ever flew business class oh, was really? then on the way home because... Oh. The travelers insurance paid for it. Wow. But I just want to say how important travelers insurance wow. is. While I was in Israel, I had a lot of rabbits that I went to, trying to be mechazik. Uh, my uncle Chaim Eisels that he did for me. Nobody in the world did for me like my uncle Chaim Eisels. From rabbis to every doctor meeting in New York, he was there. I have no words. My father's youngest brother. I mean, 
I can't even thank him. It's not even possible. But he has a lot of connections. I remember I was by the bank of the bank of Maya Shechta. He gave me a Kamaya. And it was so weird because I'd never felt so sure. They never gave me this full brucha that I had that feeling of sure. But I knew always that you have to have a minimum betochen. But I never felt really that she's going to come because they didn't really promise me. Tulsa Hard never I spoke to. Every, I was like unbelievable how I, and I still didn't. I have to also say I had uh, a lot of, just as we started the beginning now of the conversation, a lot of support. A lot of Rebbe's called me. I had one Rebbe called me that I had no shaykhs with, and I think it's very interesting to bring up. Mm-hmm. His, his, yeah. his division to Rebbe of Borough Park. His name is Harav Atzadik, the bank of Yosef Hager. He called me Friday morning. He called me Matcha Zalman. Do that, Yanke of Yosef Hager. I said, I don't like spam calls, but who is this? I had no idea. <laughs> He says, I said, are you the vision to Rebbe of Park? He said, that vision to Rebbe is my grandfather. I said, who are you? Whose son are you? He said, the Pinchas so I said, so you're the vision to Rebbe? He says, that's what they call me. He's a big unav. He's a very uh, selfless guy. He doesn't care about himself. So he tells me, I had a son that had a major accident once. And he was in a coma that didn't give him hope. He says, Baruch Hashem, he's married and he has a child. But Chazalman, don't give up. Since then, he didn't give up on calling me. He called me. His daughter called my daughter. His wife called my daughter. He calls my son. Now to Israel, he called me up a few days ago. How is he doing? He asked he needs his number to how to reach him. Just how good, I just want to show good people out there. How I never ha- I had no connection to vision mm-hmm. at all. How he was there for me every step of the way, and uh, the Stachina Rebbe didn't leave me for a second. There was like so many good people out there that were there for me. Amazing. I want to talk a little bit about the subject because our viewers and our listeners, um, I'm sure, they're all going to be shocked as an understatement and mesmerized of what they're hearing over here. But I see you, you, you are calm, you're okay, you are talking about Kalalisul, and you, you don't seem to have so many bitter and angry vibes yeah. coming out of you. I want, to, I want to get a lesson, I want to teach our audience a little less, a big lesson right. in a minute in Betochen. You look, a lot of people go through tzuras, everybody's a big tzura. But I remember one thing that the cop told me in Israel. Mori, he called me Mori, then he asked me my name. He says, I never had such a story here. Mm. You had a bigger chance to win the lottery than this should happen. And if you want to write a horror story, you cannot write the script so well. This is what he told me. So back to, to what you asked me, being strong and a minute with Betuchen, it's very hard because my youngest turned the next day two years old, so she doesn't remember her mother. Wow. My oldest was then 16 and a half. My Oshi, my boy, was 13 and a half. My other one was 11, my daughter, Chayla, and my Yankee was six. So they were very, very young, these kids. And I knew that for them to grow up normal is to have a healthy father. So as much as a person has broken inside and shattered, Basically, I mean, I had to wake up the next day for them. So inside, maybe, yes. I never show it outside. It I'm always with a smile. Oh, yeah. I'm always there having a good time. I'm telling people a good word. I was, as much as I was broken inside, I was fighting with myself to be happy outside. And I was broken. Yes, sometimes you don't want to wake up in the morning. You're thinking the whole world caved in. But how could you? And it's not possible. And it's very important that I have to say the family support that I had and that I have is impossible. You can't go on without family. Like people say, friends are very well, but by the end of the day, there's nothing like family. My parents, my mother, cooking Shabbos, 
my sister's clothing. They have a clothing store, Flamingo Baby. So I had no, it was easy for me to, to get clothing for them. They were there, they were there for me. Day one, day two, day three. My mother, my father, they moved in when I needed to. I soon get to a point, even when they moved in at a time, that I was helping Claudia still. That was during COVID. I'll speak about it soon. And the family support, my parents and everything, till today, there was no way in, a, in from here till there that I could be able to go on a life without my parents and my siblings. And the same goes for my father-in-law and mother-in-law, that how my father-in-law, I can say it, when the thing happened, he was screaming the Schwarz Apple for man Eugenampa Merzi. Let's explain it. Uh, you could explain it in English. Mm -hmm. The black apple, the black of my eyes. Of apple of my eyes apple that was, that was be taken away because she was his closest child. Not one of his kids. He had a love to her that he didn't have to any anybody. He loves every kid, but the love to her was such a connection that he couldn't live without her. And and uh, so that closeness, but the way that he and and my shvig is and so my shvig Hamesh Gold and my shvig were there so much and every step of the way with uh, with also the, the my 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 brother-in-laws and sister-in-laws and Baruch Hashem, my father-in-law a, a few years before my wife Leilayin didn't have the schia to live in the house for too long, that he built us, that it should make it easier. He didn't even know when he's building it, that he made it to make it easier for me and his daughter's kids to be able to go on and live when he gave me the house to live in, but he built it for us with his whole heart and he, with, with no, uh, he's such a, 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 like to say, such a selfless guy. He doesn't need even a thank you. And I'm living in that house and bring up his Einiklich in the house that he built wow. me. This is too much for me to handle. I'm sorry. So let, this, let, I, I, I wish we can like slice it, this interview to a few sessions. I know we don't have so much But time. I don't know it's going to be, it's, gonna, it's very hard. I actually, I had to break myself to come here. So I, I, rather, I rather get it over yes, in one I, interview because yes. I cannot do this again. And soon we're going to tell our audience very big news. Of, At the end, I'll, some, I'll say yes. Some upcoming um, Simcha. Simchas in Mr. Miles' life. But we're not running so fast. We right, so, uh, so you asked so me about I'm, the men in Betuchni. Yes, I, I don't know how you can handle it, how so you can pick actually, it up. So actually, I heard the Slechina Rebbe, Rav Yudkovsky, was also there for me and is there. It doesn't miss a Shabbos. He doesn't call me to say good Shabbos. So the first time he spoke to me about this, he told me, Matchazam, I want to tell you something, and I want to tell you a story. Right after the war, the closing Geruf Sechran Levruche, a good be Yisrael, was very into helping people and bringing them back to Yiddishkeit. He was involved. I don't know another Rebbe did that like he did after the war. Unbelievable. You hear the stories. It's known, it's famous. It's yeah. famous. There was once a closing Begeruche that had a cousin that didn't believe. We can't blame them after the war. They love wives, children. And he used to keep the, telling his cousin, come back, come back. He was trying to give him a little bit. His cousin, to, his cousin told him, one more time, you tell me that, lose my number. He says, you know what? No problem. Do me a favor. Come to my rabbi that closed on the grove, and I'm never, ever going to tell you, tell you anything again. So the Gaboom and him, they prepped up the closing on the grove. He's coming in this guy. He's not a believer. He's coming for such a chosh of a family. Let's... No problem. Let's do a job on him. Let's do a job with him. So I listened to a lot of his tapes, the closing with his tapes. So not that I want to mimic him, but the, I heard the story, like the, the, the Chini rebel was telling it to me, like he said it. Mm -hmm. So he came in, he had his voice. I don't know if you ever heard a sheet in Shkibishtash mm -hmm. It's like unbelievable. He says, Rabid, Kemaheya, Zetzdech Leben Mir, sit down next to me. And he looked him in the eyes and he told him, I hear the host cautious. I hear you have questions. I also have questions. They killed my wife and 11 children. This is what he told him. But I'm not looking for answers. 
you have questions, you're allowed to have questions, he told him, but you're looking for answers, I can't help you. The end of the story is irrelevant because I, I don't know if he did or didn't, but I heard the gaboom, they were so upset. You had him here, you could have got him, you could have saved him. He says he has questions, he's right, but you're not allowed to look for answers. So the Stachini Rebbe told me that Chazalman, you and your children are allowed to have questions, but you're not allowed to ever look for answers. And that lives, that still I live every day in those words of the closing Begaduf, not allowed to look for answers. Because if you look for answers, it doesn't help. Even though you have very big questions. I have a lot of questions. A mother, the prime of her life, she was 36 when the accident happened. She put everything in the children. And she didn't even have this chia of marrying off even one child. I married off a child myself during these four years. And Baruch Hashem, I have nachas, I have really einikl, I have you know, after my grandfather. But she didn't even have a mother that did so much for the kids. How could you take away a mother in a prime? It's a question, but a big one. You can't, you can't, you can't look for answers. So what uh, keeps you? What keeps you? So basically, motivated. There's a lot mind. of things that keep me motivated, but now is going to be my wife's first yard site in in, th- in two weeks. It's Zion Kislev. Actually, it's already after 12 months. People told me that it, her yard site is four years ago because my, I was a labor almond for four years and my kids were labor to assignment. But now officially is the first yard site. And I learned for years, Chayvus I would say 15 years I'm learning Chayvus Alvovus. But I counted how much times I learned Chayvus Alvovus. From when the start of the story, I finished Chayvus Alvovus every month. So at the yard site, I'm going to make making a seem the 48th time a Chayvus Alvovus. Because in Chayvus Alvovus it says, a person has to live for today and live life to its fullest because this world is only a prosda, only a, a, a dodach, like a passageway for the next world. And if you learn it, it goes in, after a while, by the beginning I was laughing, not laughing. You don't think what the words are. But the second you get that issue, that problem, the Chayv Savovus was here to help you. Besides that, my wife, every it was a, like a million Tehillim groups. And every time she got a text message to say Tehillim for somebody, she was the first one to say. I used to laugh from her, Eva Agna. She said, what do you mean? Maybe the person, if the something happens to the person, it's going to be my fault. So that the minute that she had her, her Tehillim is going to help. I remember I grabbed her phone right after the accident. I was crying at the I'm one of the Hillam groups. I said, she's here for you every day. Please have her in mind. Please, Tzatl Basas Tamalka. I ran, I scrammed into the, into the Hillam group, but they heard it then. And I was like, so she also was very into the believing and the Aminim Petuchen was very strong in my family. And not just that. I'll even explain how much that when she passed away, my son didn't even believe that she passed away. But when I was in Israel, I have a, I brought a note that my daughter wrote, wrote me. She's married now, but she was 16 and a half then. And, 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 and I just made a copy that I should be able to read it, what Amin and Betuchen is about. And okay. and I'll I'll read it and and she praises us, but I think it's it's a very very strong message. So it happened on December twelfth. This was four days later. You see, it's dated. She wrote the name Siri Meisels, and it's dated December 16, 2018. So she writes like this to me that she faxed it to Israel through my father. I feel as I'm living in a dream. No, a nightmare. I can't believe that this is happening to me. Me, plain, ordinary Tziri. Who would have think it? My first reaction was total numbness. I was crying. Crying like I never cried before. But I didn't know where they're coming from. Huge torrents of gushing tears, seemingly never-ending. Breaking the news to my sister, that's Chayla, more tears, tears from broken hearts who can't come up. I wrap these tears around the fact that their mother, my mother, 
my beautiful young Yiddish mama is laying in a hospital bed. It's too much to bear, but Hashem, in His endless kindness, prepared comfort to soften the blow, to help us along this painful journey. I find myself giving chizik to friends and family and realizing that these huge words are coming from my amazing parents, my one in a million parents, who in their unbelievable chesed have given and given us, and with the Mitchell continue to give so very much, supporting, encouraging, advising, and most of all, strengthening us. And I'm drawing on that reservoir of Koyach that my wonderful Elton has granted me and filled me with my parents have been so strong for me. It's time for me to be strong for them. She's 16 and a half. I'm seeing Hashem's chesed of all around me. Chesed is a huge part of my family's lives and I'm seeing my brothers and sisters and Claudia Yisrael taking from their, taking their time to gather and say to Hillem, bake challahs, ben shlech early, saying shira shirim. I know that my mother will be so happy and overwhelmed at this awesome show of achtas. My family is being so strong, so believing. My rock. I'm following, my father is my rock. I'm following his lead. I'm ready to be strong. So believing and be a rock for my family and friends. By the schis of the never-ending chesed that my parents occupy themselves. With the schis of all that Klal Yisrael is doing. Bringing my mother a full and complete recovery better than ever. If that is even possible. And she bring my amazing close-knit family back together again. May Bizoiche to Emet Shem see the coming of Nisim, Yemani, and remember a minna betochen geela. Continue to daven, continue to pray, and continue to believe. So, how can you not have a minna betochen when you see your daughter riding with this letter? For Claudius, it will, is something that I'm reading it now, I'm crying because. It's not even possible to, I always say, like, an 80 year old can write this, a six and a half say, year old. I was going to say much more. I don't think any Rosh is, 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 is It was, was something so painful. And, uh -huh. But this gave the strength, besides that she was 16 and a half, and she, she was actually the mother to my kids for a few years because she, uh, she was the oldest. And, and going on that, but the, the thing of Amina is a very strong thing and let me just say something about a minute if you let me and i will i will explain how how i keep myself so my daughter had a hotline as soon as it happened she opened up a hotline and she every night had set them to him once in a few months, once in a month or a month and a half, she brought a guest speaker, official shechte, one of the Rebetzins. And she knows her father likes to speak, so she wanted to make me feel good. So she invited me a few times. I remember the first time speaking. First, I want to thank all the girls for coming. And I said her something that I think is very, very, very important. And I've used this line a, a, a while, a long time, because since then I've been going to be mechazic, other people going through this situation, similar situations. Not even similar. Not everybody's situation is their, their biggest pain bot. I always say, people always tell me, ah, the guy passed away, he was 90. So I laugh sometimes, are you crazy? It was somebody's father. So he had more years than somebody that was younger, who was more connected to him. So even if his father was 90, it's still his, it's still his father. So you cannot, it's everybody's so pain is their most pain. So I said like this, how does a person look at life? 
how does a Jew look at life? How does a believer look at life? And how does a non-believer look at life? How do you say life? How do you spell life in English? L-I-F-E. How do you write life in the Torah? Chaim, Ches, Yedid, Enderman. What's the two middle letters from life? If. A non-believer says if all the time. If I wouldn't have gone to Israel, that wouldn't have happened. If I would have done this. How many ifs? A person keeps on saying if. How many ifs could I have said in my life? If I wouldn't have done this, if, 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 my kids and me never, ever, ever, ever asked if. Never asked if, because we know. Because in the Torah it says Chaim. What's the two middle letters from Chaim? Hashem, Hashem. If you look into how a Yid looks at Chaim, Ches, Yid, Yid, and the two other words is Mem Ches, is Moyach, thinking, that's if. You have to look into the Chaim to find them. I said it a few times. So I, your, your you know, my Chiddush wow. and I pitched it around a little bit more wow. throughout the years. But my kids and me never, ever asked for if. Never. And a person has to understand that even in the hardest times in their life, you would never allow to ask if. And I could ask if. I could ask today if. So many ifs. It happened in the Holy Land. She was never there. She had a chapa zetz. I, I think sometimes when she told me that we should have done it a long time ago, I'm happy we didn't because Hashem wanted her to have a bang there. So then I'm happy that I had 17 years of life with her. 17 is toiv. I had toiv at 17 good years with her. You know, I'm sorry to be a little talking about myself. I thought I'm a macho guy. I can handle um situations and in, in here emotional stuff but tonight i'm cracking down uh i'll 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 i'll, I'll, uh, I'll say because also uh, i'll say another way how you can look let's say it's like krishna you say shema yeshua l'ashem and l'kain neshame what does a guy do he holds his hands on his eyes why so once an unbelievable uh, devotee says because a guy says, Shema Yisua L'Hashem Elekein Yashem Eichat, he closes his eyes. Even if it's dark, what happens after you close your eyes? You take it off, you see the light. So even if it's so hard, you say, Shema Yisua L'Hashem Elekein Yashem Eichat, you see there's still light at the end of the tunnel. We don't know what the light is, and we don't know what good is. It's not possible to know what good is. Maybe this was good. Maybe it's not. Uh, we look at it that it's not good, but it probably was good. If the Irish that did it, it's probably good. I, I, uh, if you think about think, if you could read a letter, it's interesting. I wrote to my kids from Israel in, in, in Yiddish, and this was, I sent them, tried to be the Machazi. It's in Yiddish? It's a Yiddish, oh. and I wrote it in my, in my wife's name. Wow. So I, I could give it to you to take home. You could read yes, it. Yeah. But I wrote that you should have show it to the camera. That you should have chizik uh, and you should wow. believe in Hashem. My mom is going to be home soon, and I made it from her name, Tzatel Bas Estamalke, and I sent it to all my kids. I wrote them then a letter. I'll tell you, um, I don't think we can comprehend the way you and your family handled this story, and. I know you're up close, and I'm not just saying it because you are here. I'm saying it because I have watched you every day. And we were involved with the, some of the efforts of the Tehillim and the initiations that so many people were doing for your fear. I didn't have the koyach to handle it. I don't know how you're handling it. You're giving us some of the tricks, some of the secrets. Uh, I think, uh, let me interrupt you. I think yes. that the Ibish to give special koyach when you go through certain... I wouldn't be able to handle it if the Ibishta wouldn't have given me the extra koyches. It's not even possible to handle, if you ask me. Yeah, so we, I, I, our program is called, his name Let's Talk Tachles. I think there isn't a bigger Tachles for our viewers to watch this most emotional turn of events and hear from the Bala Masa himself such strong words of a mene and betuchen and and never giving up and never no matter how how wet your pillow got got each every i'm sure each and every single night of your life and your kids 
And I'm starting to figure out why your kids can I know are, are performing this way. It's, it's a direct, direct impact. I knew right away that when I came back, I took my kids home. And I took them home alone. Wow. But I knew that the, in, in order the kids to be and have a normal life, siblings have to fight together, laugh together. They were laughing? And I had them, I was making them laugh, even if I, it was hard, but I had to bring them home together. I had a lot of people telling me, split them up, put one here, one was a baby, she was two, one was there. I said, wow. it's not happening. I'm the father, I'm taking a chrais, I have to bring them up. It almost seems like you went to a school, to a college, to train yourself for 15 years, to 17 years. Maybe for 17 years you got training. I did get training because my wife was my trainer. That's, that was my point. She trained me it's how to bring up the kids because she was here. a mother that was only for her kids. And I only mm -hmm. tried to go into her footsteps. I know that by the Chmoy, she used to always say, when they used to, he used to have his big dirushas and he used to speak about his big uncle, David Yoel. He used to say, Ich halt um de Pekuden, was man fett hat mich gegeben. And I just want to go further with it. Holding on to the deposit. And I'm holding it until I'll, after Mashiach comes, I want to give it back to him as he gave, wow. gave it to me. I feel the same way. My wife, the way how she brought them up, I was just holding the deposit and trying not to ruin it. That's, that's to be pussy. able to give it back to her the way that she wanted them to, to, to grow up. She built her own home. Correct. Without knowing where we're going to go. Wow. So, so, and, and, and people also have to understand a lot of things, a lot of good things came out of it. Achtis and Klali so a lot of people, I can't even thank all the people that things that they did, uh, you know, from our shield alone. But a person has to know one thing in life, and it's a very, very important thing that I learned. A person doesn't know what's going to happen, not tomorrow, the next second of his life. My life changed in a second. So you have to live life to its fullest that day. Not cheshboinness, not this. You have to live to its fullest as you could and be happy in life. I once heard a very interesting story, and you can learn something from it. A person was once walking down 14th Avenue outside here, and he saw a girl, a blind girl walking with a stick. She was blind. She was never blind. What does a person do? A person passes, he goes, ah, nebuch. Nebuch. What happens 30 seconds later? He's at the pizza shop eating. Doesn't, doesn't even remember. A person has to know that this knocking of the stick, when you pass, is Hashem knocking you on your back and telling you, don't be so oblivious and so blind the knocking of the stick is me knocking on your back and waking you up and telling you, this girl doesn't have two eyes. Can you imagine what she, she, would, she would have done with only having one eye? You know that this girl would, could never have the opportunity to see her kids, to see her light, the light of life. Uh, this knock, you can't just pass and not learn something for it. A person makes a book, a bekayach them in the morning. Can you imagine the bruche we like over them? Can you imagine the bruche that she would make if she would have had one eye? The, the roofs, the sil, the whole everything would have jumped with the bruche of her bekayach over them. A person can't be so oblivious and not see that when Hashem sends something your way, your way just wake up and say thank. Don't wake for tomorrow morning to say bekayach over them. The Baruch HaBakayi Chivim is a technical thing that you have to say in the morning. Say that second. Thank you, Hashem, for giving me two eyes. A person has to thank Hashem on that second what he has. A person doesn't understand what he has. A person married, children, everything I can get. So there's bumps in the road. But what would my kids do to have their mother back for a second? My little Yankee, he's very smart, he's 10. He tells me, When she passed away, he, when I woke him up, so let's go fast forward four years. So much things happened. We went to so many hospitals. 
we did, I can't say, I could say I did and we did everything in the world to try to save Turti's life. She went to every home. She had the best doctors. She had a doctor in Colombia that we got from Rufua, an unbelievable organization that they helped me. Therapy. Rufua got us a huge doctor on brain that he even operated on her. I had to be in an organization helping for uh, for TBI uh, issues. Maybe the only good thing was I got very cl- connected to Dr. Connolly. He's the biggest in brain injury, and I've since then sent him a lot of patients. Right. My connections with the hospitals and things that I do, I save some people's I think, lives. I think one day you should become a brain surgeon. Uh, I, I probably could because <laughs> I probably know more than them at this exactly. point. I read up a lot on it. And... and uh, all these things that came out of it. But I could say that we, me, the goals, the misles, did everything in the world. There wasn't a Shabbos, I'm talking till COVID, a night that, oh, she didn't have a nurse sleeping with her, or that my father wasn't there for Shabbos, my brother-in-law weren't there for Shabbos, my shri, my shri. There wasn't a time, Shabbos was harder for me to go, so I had to be home with my kids. So I had to give them a home atmosphere. But my kids went a few times a week. It was hard, but they wanted to see their mother. And they, she went from, from Colombia to, uh, 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 to, to, to Queens Nassau, to every uh, Hamilton Park, to, to, uh, to Kessler Institute, to uh, you name it. We went and we went with her and we didn't stop. And the last uh, 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 80 days of her life, she got Nabuch infections and she was actually my mom in this hospital. And I'm very involved there. I'm like a liaison there and I'm very connected with the doctors and uh, the nurses. And they couldn't actually, it was painful for them to see my wife because I'm so close to them happen. But it's very interesting how Hashem does and runs his world. There wasn't a time that I wasn't there. There wasn't a time that my family wasn't there. The night that she went back to the home. To which home? Hamilton Park. So she was in the hospital. hospital. She was going back and forth. So she was for 80 days. She had blood clots and blood trends and issues. And I got a phone call 2.13 in the morning. Mr. Meisels. I saw the number of my ID. I saw that it was not good. Because they wouldn't call me just in the middle of the night. And I actually get scared when I still see a number <laughs> at 2.13. I say, Mr. Meisels, so yes, that's me. Your wife passed away an hour ago. And nobody was there. And as much as we were there, my wife was very into not hurting the family. I always feel that she didn't want us to see her pass away. So nobody was there when she passed away. And... It's very interesting how Hashem fears his world. Uh, at that point, I called my very good friend, uh, David Halberstam. My very good friend, he's the Baba Rebbe's son, and he came right over to my house. The Stachina Rebbe was right over. He was there like 15 minutes later because I didn't know how to handle with my kids. My father-in-law was in Florida then for a few days. Everything and came down crashing. Everything came down crashing, and... My Yankee, when he woke up, he's 10. Now he's 10, so he's going to be 11. And he, and what's coming on? So I told him, and he started crying. He said, Tati, a few more things I had to talk to her. Why couldn't she come home? It's I just hear that things in his ears. I wanted to say interesting that I I, I, I I want to say that I'm in the my kids had. My son, Oshi, is 18 now. He learns in Israel. I found a text message that he sent to my wife's telephone on October 27, 2021. And he writes like this. It was before she, not, uh, not before she, short while before, short she, while before she passed away. And he writes like this. Hi, mommy. It's been two years and seven and a half months that you're in a coma. And I don't know why, but I have a very good feeling that the Yeshia is almost here. And I can't wait to hear your voice again and play and eat your delicious food. Mommy, 
I, 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 every time I read this, I cry because I can't see my kids' pain. I can't wait for that kiss and hug. I love you so, so much. Sincerely, your beloved oldest son, Oshi, that looks like you. Crying now, I know you can do it. You're still coming home healthy and wealthy and happy. This is my Oshi. He still believes, but I even do believe that anymore. <laughs> it's funny because when she passed away, or well, she woke up in the morning, I didn't let anybody wake anybody up, so I was waiting for Brilliant. them to wake up themselves. And or well, she wakes up and he hears a commotion downstairs and he asks Tati, was Titzkhto? So I'm very close to him because he's my oldest son, so so I told him. Sinishkit. He says, what's this? It's not good. He said, mommy's in a better place. He says, what are you talking about? He said, mommy is in a better place. He said, it can't be. Go check if she's still alive. She wasn't alive and he knew she wasn't alive. But he had such a minute but talking that she's coming home. Even if he knew deep down how bad the matzav is, he uh -huh. told me, Tati, go check because it's not true. It can't be. Just showing the minute but talking what these kids have. It's something it, didn't, it didn't come from thin air. I can tell you that. Something that you could learn from and we have to learn from and, and it's something that you have to go out in life. I think um, our audience will start booking you for... If, if we think there was a guy that taught us a lot of men in the last past few years... It's... it's, it's uh, buckle <laughs> I'm up. I'm not here to... <laughs> buckle up. I'm not here to wow. think. So you see, I, I also cry and break down. But when do I cry? When I see my kids cry, that's when I cry. I'm very strong for myself, but I cannot see my kids cry. And I read that because my I could imagine how he wrote it, and he was crying probably when he did it. And uh, that's a that was going to be a four years for when that happened. No, I want to re-highlight again that in about two weeks. So before I, before you, you highlight it, let me say something. No, I'm saying first that before in about two weeks will be the youth out of your first right. year side. First year side. And because for actually the year is over right. already, but it was a leap year. Right. And and you. So it's going to be... A, a but uh, you, are, we're about to break news to the audience, which some of them may know, but some don't. Okay. But so you said you want to say something before. Uh, so we cannot this? conclude... Uh, Let's talk tachlis with with sad, with a sad thing. So it's, we have to. It has to be meaningful, and it's correct. so it is so deep down. It, correct. It's and I'll also me, say, and I'll, I'll, gonna, I'm sorry. It's going to take me so much time to process. Of course, the same thing to the audience, to process what we hear tonight. That the most devastating event happened to a person and to a family, and although they are heartbroken to an unimaginable degree. They are still going on. They are still strong. I see your kids. I know them. And I can vouch and say loud and clear that they are healthy. They are well. They are smiling. They, they are canine the horror. A beautiful grandchild Hashem gave you. I, I once went to my wife's tea and I said, There's three partners in a person. A father, a, mad, a mother, yeah. and the Ibishta. You took away the mother, you have two thirds. You better take care. Wow. That's what I told to, to Hashem. And he's listening to And you. he's listening. And I can see it from a, a day to day thing. So that's what I once said by my wife's scene. But I want to just say one thing. On a, a, ending on a good note. So uh, the emotional obsessive is not, was known as a person that used to give a lot of food and bring in a lot of people to his home. Once there was a guy that came in. And he was a Valdelober. You say it, he was a robber. Highway that, robber. He, not highway, he was more... Today it's a highway robber. Right. And somebody once told him, how are you letting him in the house? He said, he's Jewish, I don't care. He's Jewish, he could come in and eat here. One day the Moshalai was going on the way on his horse and buggy. And he went into the forest. Right. And guys jumped on him. The robbers, they wanted to kill him. All of a sudden, a guy comes running. And he says, hey... Don't touch him. He's my rabbi. He went over to the Moshe Lab. He says, you know who I am? He says, no. 
Remember the story that everybody wanted to throw me out when I came to your house and I didn't? That's me. I'm going to let you go, but I need one favor. I want you to learn my son, teach him Torah and Mitzvahs. Mm. He says, no problem. He brought a son. I had a much life, learned with him. Out of pies, at night, his father went to him to see if he knows what he's learning. He didn't know anything. His father whipped him, beat him. Another day, another day. He didn't know nothing. His father kept on beating him. One day, he tells, uh, the, 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 the father tells him, it's time to go. My son is a lost case. He told the son, do me a favor. Escort the Moshe Leib out of the forest. He says, okay. He escorts him out. And Moshe Leib turns around to him and he tells him, I have the question to ask you. Your father beat you so hard. You never said a peep. How was it possible that you didn't even open up your mouth? He didn't want to answer. He says, please tell me. He said, I'll tell you. We're robbers. They teach us that we shouldn't give out to the enemies, our people, or what's going on here. Our secrets. Our secrets. So they say two, uh, three things we have to know. That the torture won't be forever. That the one I was hitting you is, because he was my father, he means my own good. And every time I get spanked, think that it's the last spank, and soon it's going to be good. This is what he told them. Then Moshe Leib came home and he told us Hasidim, three things we have to learn from this thing. We're in Gulas, we're going through such pain, such suffering. Everybody has suffering. So many stories, so many issues. I have a friend that just passed away. He was in the same home as my wife, Michelle Mzishi Rosenblum. I I I but talking from that family I learned of. I remember once his father came over to me and he told me. You know, he used to come every day to, to daven with them. And he always tells me, you know what? I can't come anymore. He's, 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 I don't see any reaction. But yeah, I have to tell you something. I said, what? What happened? He says, I'm starting to say, and he said, I said, I said, as long as the neshuma is in a person's body, I have to say thanks to Hashem. He says, I'm coming back tomorrow because he's still alive. Because as long as a person is alive, no matter how he's alive, you still have to go and thank Hashem. So Moshe Leib Sassava says three things we have to learn. That when somebody's in pain, somebody's, somebody's in pain, it's the, it, the torture is not going to be forever. Maybe. Number two, that you're going through something, you should know it's from your father in heaven and it means your own good. And, and, and number three, the this is the last smack and before you think. with this introduction. So... so <laughs> And so a few months ago, I Baruch Hashem got engaged to a very, very wonderful girl that everybody knows. Her name is Pessy Brecher. And actually before this podcast, I told her, I'm coming here. She said, go ahead. I asked her permission. And she is known to everybody what kind of soft person she is. And I was looking for somebody. You were looking. I was looking. You got. I got. <laughs> Hashem sent me somebody. That's what I'm saying. You got. That would be perfect for my kids. She's the most warm person, lovable person. She loves, and I've heard such good things about her. And I'm looking forward, uh, as I think sometimes that Tzerti sent her to be the mother of her kids. That's something that she started because she's the perfect fit to be. But. I'm, I'm going to be getting married in Mitchum a week after the yard site because I promised my kids, I promised especially my son Ushi, that said Kaddish, so you do everything for your kids, that I would not get married it out. until after the yard site, even if the year was up. But I will, I will say I'm, I'm going to wait until after the yard site for respect of my kids for the first yard site. Wow. I have more to say, no, but no, 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 it's no, too no, much. <laughs> I cannot handle it, and our audience will, will need many tissue boxes to, to watch this interview, this podcast. Really, I have no words. I have no words to thank you and thank Hashem, the Ibishta, for being so mysterious yet so amazing that you can conclude such emotional and painful podcast at Let's Talk Tachlis with big Tachlis knows the Bukh Hashem getting married. Yeah. And I want to venture that I shall have you should be 
very easily building together with your wife, and you and your kids should find a lot of comfort and a lot of simcha. And we should always share simchas. And and listen, we daven together in the same besmedes. Yeah, no, that's we should, no. So should we, we should we should see davening in the same shul together. That doesn't speak by davening. And yes, from that oh, alone, we should we should yeah. have see nachis from each other. Because I mean, and our entire audience should all have only simchas and nachas. Yeah. I think you have the koyach to vinch, and I'm glad you you are part of our let's talk tachas family. And I want to wish you lots of luck, and thank Amen. you so much for coming. Amen. Thank you.